Hi, welcome to Zen Prize. In today's instructional video, Provision by Profiles, we'll teach you how to create iOS configuration profiles with Zen Prize Device Manager. To get started with creating your configuration profiles with Zen Prize, we'll walk you through how to create a default passcode policy, an Exchange ActiveSync configuration, a Wi Fi, and VPN configuration. Starting with the Policies tab and clicking on Configuration Profiles for iOS, start a new profile. Passcode, Restrictions, Wi-Fi, VPN, and Exchange ActiveSync are but a few of the configuration profiles available. We'll begin with the passcode. Type in an identifier so that we can lock in the name for this new policy, and then create an associated display name. The display name is what you'll be able to find and change later if you want to. Add a description if you need to have some assistance for others who might be using the policy profiles later on. The Allow Profile removal lets you choose between Always, Authentication, or Never for the user on the own device. We'll leave it at Always for today. Click the Policy tab, and now we can begin configuring the real policy settings. We'll require the passcode, go beyond the Allow Simple values, and require alphanumeric values. Here we can set the minimum length of the passcode, as well as increase it to having a non-alphanumeric character. Some organizations require a date from which the passcode will expire. You can also set the auto lock into time and minutes, as well as the history of passwords or the grace period before the device will lock. Last, we'll set the maximum failed attempts before the device will actually wipe. The default is 10 and we'll leave it there. Click the Create button and your profile is finished. Creating a Wi-Fi policy is similar. Start with a new profile and select Wi-Fi. Configuration properties will open up and you'll create a new identifier for the Wi-Fi network. Create a display name for the policy as well. And then finally add a description that might be helpful to those who are administrating the policy later on. Now click the Wi-Fi tab, and here you're going to want to enter the SSID for the Wi-Fi network that your devices will want to connect with this profile. Typically this is your company's corporate Wi-Fi network. If it's a hidden network, you would select this here. Choose an encryption type from any of the legacy or most common enterprise WPA and WPA2 encryption techniques. Add a passcode or passphrase that's used. And then finally, choose the protocols that will be authenticating against. We'll go ahead and choose the PEEP. The Authentication tab gives you final configuration if you wish to add a username and password. Leaving a username and password blank is most common because organizations want to have their users add the credentials themselves. Click Create, and now the policy profile for Wi-Fi is completed. Now we'll go ahead and start with another profile for the Exchange ActiveSync configuration. Go ahead and enter your new identifier for Exchange ActiveSync and add the display name. Enter the optional description for the profile and then also choose whether or not the profile is allowed to be removed by the user on the device. Click the Exchange ActiveSync tab and here we can enter the details about connecting the device in the profile to the ActiveSync backend for Exchange. Enter the username, and then finally the Exchange ActiveSync host name. This is typically the front end web access name of the server. Go ahead and enter the Windows domain name, as well as the Windows login name for the user, and the fully qualified SMTP address. You may also enter the password for the user. If you leave this blank, the user will have to enter that on their device and choose the number of days for mail to synchronize with the device once it's ready. Click Create, and your ActiveSync profile is now ready for use. Let's go ahead and create the VPN profile. Select VPN from the New Profile menu, and then go ahead and repeat the steps for Identifier, Display Name, and Description.
Again, you may wish to choose whether or not the user can remove the profile from their device. Click the VPN tab and start entering information about the local profile for the phone. Connection name is what will be displayed on the device for the VPN settings. Then choose the connection type from anything from the standard PPTP to any of the third-party SSL VPN network appliances. Enter the host name of the VPN connection, as well as the user account that might be used to validate against the VPN host. You can choose between password and RSA two-factor authentication. We'll use password. You can also choose the encryption level. We'll set that to automatic. And you can also vote to whether or not to send all traffic over the VPN connection from the device. Lastly, if you have a proxy on the inside, you'll need to set that here. Click Create when ready to finish and complete the VPN profile. The last step to the process of your profiles is to create a deployment package. On the Deployment tab, click New Package for iOS. Let's give a unique package name that will be easily identified in the console. Go ahead and click the Next button, and now we'll assign it to a group of users. You'll see that we have the pre-assigned iPhone users group. Click Next, and now we can work on the resources. Expand your configuration profiles that you just created. You can select any of them and either select and click the arrow button or double click and it will bring over each of the policy and configuration settings you need. There may be a choice to order the policies, like putting your passcode policy first. Let's go ahead and move that to the top before other policies are added to the device. Click next when ready. The scheduler allows us to choose when the device profiles will be pushed. Let's leave it on every connection. The deployment rules allow us to set conditions from which we can actually allow a device to receive a new profile. Let's go ahead and set it so that if the device is less than 50%, it will not add the profile. Let's go ahead and add another rule that might be helpful. By limiting through a boolean, we can actually choose things like battery charging, data roaming, passcode compliancy, and root access. Let's go ahead and choose the data roaming and not allow it to allow a new profile while it's roaming. This will save data costs. When working with multiple rule conditions, you have the ability to actually choose some advanced options for whether it's an AND or or NOT statement. We'll go ahead and leave ours as an AND statement. Lastly, a summary page lets you review all the configuration choices you've made. You can go back to the previous screen, or if everything looks alright, go ahead and click Finish to create the deployment package. Your deployment package is now complete. Completed deployment packages are listed on the left column. The status is listed in the top header for pending successful and failed packages, and then the package properties that you saw before, which can be edited at any time. One last step. We need to deploy the package. Let's go ahead and click the Deploy button. And soon, you'll see your deployment ready and provisioned for all your devices. And congratulations, you've just completed the steps to getting all of your security profiles for iOS devices ready and deployed. That's how to with Zenprise, automating mobile management.